yeah, started recording good morning let's start so what we covered yesterday we covered a few network scenarios one is difference between l2 and l3 how the traffic is moving within the esxi host when you have a two machines on the same host on the same vlan okay and if you have a two vms or two virtual machines on the same host but on a different vlan how the traffic is moving that we tested yesterday also what is the difference between access port and the trunk port okay so these two things we discussed yesterday so today what we will do is we'll do a couple of more scenarios one is let me clear this off one scenario is let's say for example uh here it is. If I go to ESXi host, okay, so there's a kernel port, right? So let me go to here. Why you need additional kernel ports? First, first thing. Let's understand why we need additional kernel ports. One thing is clear, you can create additional kernel ports. If I'm saying why you need additional kernel ports means you can imagine additional, creating additional kernel ports is possible. Now, my simple question is, you have one server. Okay, I'm not saying whether it is a physical or virtual, doesn't matter. Okay, you install the Windows and right you install a windows imagine physical or virtual doesn't matter okay and you have one network adapter and how many ips that you assign to this hmm? uh, one network adapter is there one network adapter yes i have one network adapter so we can assign one one switch how many IPs that you can assign to this Windows Server? Oh, one IP address. One IP address. Okay. If I want to assign a second IP address, is it possible? No. Uh, you can, it is possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In advance, we can do it. Yeah. No, no, it is possible, but you cannot assign a gateway to second IP. There's a limitation. Okay. Okay. okay, so if you want to do more Googling and all, you can do it on the Windows part. Okay, similarly, okay. similarly, imagine I have one ESXi server. Okay, and I said mm -hmm. one kernel port is there inside, and two cables are connected. Right, so switch. Imagine I'm just representing one switch here. Okay. In real time, you have a, multiple switches for the same functionality, for high availability and redundancy. Okay, so there's a, there are some port codes. If you want, you can assign additional kernel port on this switch. Means this ESXi host has IP called 192.168 right 192.168 30 dot 51 right now if I need I can assign one more IP called 192.168 30 dot 151 is it possible Yes, it is possible. But if I want to assign some other IP called 192.168, 20.51, which is not possible because remember yesterday I told you one simple concept called access port. Access port will allow only one VLAN. If this is a, if these two cables are connected in physical switch, the ports are access ports. Those ports will allow only VLAN 30 data. They won't allow VLAN 20 data. So if I assign this range IP, it will not respond. Can we test this? 
Yes. I said if I assign any IP, this is one kernel port. I said multiple kernel ports. Yeah, we can. Second kernel port, I'll assign this IP. It should work. Or third, third kernel, third kernel, uh, kernel port. If I assign this IP, it should not work on the same yes. switch. It's on the same switch. Let's yeah. test this. Go to ESXi yes. host kernel port. Add networking. Add networking. So VM kernel adapter. New VM kernel adapter. You want to create a kernel adapter on the existing switch? Mm -hmm. Yes, on the existing switch. So on the existing switch, switch 0. Next. Okay, network labeling. New. Okay, so VM kernel 2. Okay, so what purpose you are using? You have multiple services that supports kernel port. V motion provisioning, fault, fault tolerance, management, replication, replication NFC, Vs and these many things are there. So I'll select only management purpose. We'll discuss all these things later on when we are testing each and everything. Okay. Next. Okay. And IP 192, 168, 30.151. Let's see. Okay, 151, right? So I'll come out. Yeah. Ping 192, 168, 30.151. I might need a break now. Let's see. Because, let me, next. Mm -hmm. See, still not pinging, right? If I say finish, it should, it should start pinging. Finish. What is created? And start functioning. Got it? Now, if I go to browser 192.168.30.151. See, it's working. So, you will be able to log in. You will be able to log in into ESXS server with a new kernel port. What is the old kernel port? 51. What is the new one? 151. On the same host. Okay. Right. So you can log into the same host with the different kernel port. See, the name is same. And you see, I have few VMs which uh, which we have created yesterday. And see, on the network side, I have uh, two kernel ports. One is management network is the old kernel port name, and the new kernel port I have assigned. Okay. And if I go to switches, two switches are there. Okay. Kernel Linux, you have uh, two kernels. And two IPs. Mm -hmm. uh, do we uh, use this for redundancy or uh, no, there no. are some other purpose also? No, the, the redundancy is for, for VMK0, for kernel port 0, we already have a redundancy. Redundancy means two cables, right? Why you need yeah. two different IPs? Uh, okay, if you look at what all the services that we have on the listed, we have around six to seven services mm -hmm. listed. I have selected only management. Okay, so I can create seven different kernel ports and assign one kernel port for one service. Can't we do that? Okay. Possible? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. for that purpose, for that purpose, we will create multiple kernel ports. Okay, so I'll say, I'll go back and create one more kernel port. Can I, oh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, can you, can you please wait for uh, 10 more minutes? Okay, no problem, no problem. Okay, and okay. let me pause this recording because there is what we are discussing. Uh, sorry for the delay. What we are discussing. So I said I have already created second kernel port. Let's go to this picture. Okay, let's go to this picture. So I have already created a second kernel port, and we are able to log in with same username and password, and you can manage your ESXS server with the second kernel port. Now I said, I can't give, I cannot, I'm oh, sorry, my bad. So I can assign this IP address to this kernel port, but you will not be able to ping this IP because on the access port, I have allowed only VLAN 30. I haven't allowed VLAN 20, right? So due to that, you will not be able to ping this IP. Let's test this out. 
how to test go to ESXi host switches add networking use kernel adapter okay existing what is this existing network strange nothing existing switch that might be for a distributed switch okay next so what I will do VM kernel 3 this time I will use it for vSphere replication the service is for vSphere replication now 192 168 20.51 and the subnet and overwrite gateway is 20.1 right gateway next so let me ping this 20.51 20.51 finish so the third kernel port has been created 20.51 but you will not see it is not pinging What is the reason? The reason is VLAN. the reason is VLAN access port is not allowed. Access port. One second. At this level, at the physical switch level, this port is not configured to allow VLAN 20. Clear on this? Okay. So in short, you can add more kernel ports, but the problem is it should be in it should be in same VLAN if you are using access port. One second, let me so if you can configure switch like that uh -huh. so that it would allow two VLANs, uh -huh. then it will work now. Yes, yes. Okay, let me go to networking and if you see three kernels, three kernels, right? So first one is used for two purposes, second one is used for only one purpose, and third one is used for only one purpose. The purpose is different, the replication. Okay, we'll we'll understand later. I mean later on we'll see how this replication, vSAN, and uh, the fault tolerance and vMotion, these services will work. That we'll see later on one by one. But for for now, let's understand. You can create multiple kernel ports for multiple services. Clear? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now one more scenario is one more scenario is <coughs> I can say total app setup how it should be. I have host one. Right? I have Host two. I have host three. Remember, you have three different hosts. Three different hosts. But so far, what I did, I have created one kernel port and one port group with three different. Sorry, one kernel port switch another port group switch with three different port groups okay but this is host one we never touched host two and three okay yeah. you need to remember you need to replicate the same configuration here as well kernel groups same configuration and one condition is if you are giving if you are giving the port group name VLAN 10 okay example here if you give VLAN 10 here 
if you give VLAN 10. So any difference in these three? No. Actually, there is a difference. Lower case, upper case, spaces. Okay, yeah. Right? Yeah. Never ever mess with these things. Okay. So, if you create a VLAN with this naming convention, you should follow the same naming convention here as well, and same naming convention here as well, and so on. N number of hosts you have in vCenter. So, VLAN name is case sensitive. Sorry? VLAN name is case sensitive. You, it is not the VLAN name. By the way, it's a port group name. I just give the name as the VLAN thing. Okay, but we are creating port groups. We are not creating VLANs in L2. We are creating port groups which are logical mapped with your physical VLANs in the physical switch, right? So when you are creating a port groups, if if you create a port group with this case sensitive on one host, you should follow the same naming convention across the VMware. You have a thousand hosts, yes, you should follow the best practices, you should follow the same name con naming convention across the thousand host. Okay, how to do that? Let's see. As of now, let's go to ESXi host and on the first ESXi physical adapters, I have five physical or six physical adapters. On the second host, if you look at only two, let me get the physical adapters first. So how to get that? Go to original host. Okay. And second ESXi server. Edit settings. I'll simply add four more network adapters. Okay, save it. Done. Restart. Done. It will take a few minutes. The second host, uh, I mean third host, do the same. Four more. Okay, save it. And restart. What happened? It is being restarted or not? Yeah, restarted. <clears throat> okay, both the ESXIs are now being restarted. Let's wait for a few minutes. So once they are rebooted, you will see, if you refresh here, you will see these two disconnected. Disconnected. If you refresh once again, the third one is also disconnected. Okay. Um, I want to do something, man. Chrome, download, offline. How to download? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Because I cannot allow the internet inside, so that is the reason. Let's see. I don't know if it was a Chrome or some <coughs> some virus or not. Let's see. All right, this this one, right? So, mm -hmm. Stay here. I can't do anything if it is a virus. We didn't download it from official side, no? I don't have internet, right, on this machine. I'm now. I am installing mm -hmm. it on. Uh, oh, it's working. Fine, man. So it's already installed. Now, what I will do? I'll just copy this.
It will. Okay, so it is easy, man. So let me log in here. Same thing, right? So <coughs> excuse me. Let's try later on. Something wrong. It's okay. Was asking to close the window. Yeah, we'll do it later on. The, the servers are rebooting, right? So, yeah. Hello. Uh, Hello. Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. Yeah, internet issues. Kille. Okay. Achalo. Sorry. Okay. So I I have assigned new network adapters for both the servers now you will see six six adapters on both the servers right okay so how to configure i want to replicate the same configuration what we have here so let's see i don't require by the way i don't require three three kernel ports i'll remove it only one kernel port is enough right mm -hmm. just for just for our understanding how we can add and manage it i've shown you so let me remove this now <clears throat> you'll see switch one or oh, sorry we, we spare standard switch switch zero two cables and one ip and switch two will run 10 20 40 okay let me do the same on the second host first of all manage physical adapters so vm nick zero is there I will add one to this. Now, now you got redundancy. Port groups. I don't want any default port groups. Remove it. Okay. If I go to networking now, if I go to networking now, you will see 10, 20, 40 VM network. VM network is still alive. Why it is showing? VM network is still alive in ESXi host 3. If I remove this, if I go to networking area, I just removed it. If I go to here, now you will see only three. Just refresh, it should go, yeah, right? Only three. Now, on the second host, what I did on the second host, one switch is already configured properly. I need a second switch. Add networking, virtual machine, port groups, I need to add it, right? So I want to create a new switch now, not the existing switch. How many cables to the new switch? Two cables. Done. Next. Now VLAN 10. ID 10. Next. Finish. So switch has been created. Now you come here and see only these three are showing up. <coughs> because if if something is popping up here means across the data center you have a 10 host in all the 10 host it should be the same then only it will show you like this the second one what i will do i'll do intentionally i'll do some mistake port group next okay existing switch only right this time i want to create a new port group on the existing switch okay so this time i will give vlan 20 vlan 20 lower case remember finish so on the second switch vlan 20 has been created okay if you go here you will see two vlan 20s two vlan 20s means v center is creating both are different port groups 
Understood? So be careful. Be careful while creating code books. Now I'll say edit settings. VLAN 20. <coughs> okay. Renamed. Now you go back and see only one. Got it what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So you need to make sure these things when you are working with any customer. And moreover, you rarely get a chance to set up install from scratch. So if you are if you get the chance to set up all these things, you are lucky enough. Agree or disagree? Agreed. Well, we'll end 40. Now, first host and the second host configurations are completed. Both are running with the same configuration. Now, I need to work upon third host. Okay. So, third host, port group is already removed and there is no redundancy. Let me add a redundant port. Oh, sorry, redundant nick. Done. Now with the high availability. I need to create a new switch now for port groups. Mm -hmm. I need to add <coughs> two adapters. VLAN 10. VLAN ID is 10. Okay. Second port group. I'm sorry, existing switch only, right? Uh, VLAN 20. VLAN 20. 20. Existing switch. Again, we run 40, we run ID is 40. 40. Then? This network label should be case sensitive. Right? Yeah, okay. So go back and see. Properly configured, no mistakes so far. So you have to do the same thing. How many hosts that cluster can support? How many hosts that we can add into the cluster? Oh God. Okay. Man, you have to remember a few things. Okay, 64 hosts in this version, and I believe we are coming up with 96 hosts. 96, I believe, 98 or 96. I, I even I forgot. For latest version 7.0, with which they are going to release it. In, uh, it is already released on March 10th, but it is already released. Sorry. Actually, I got the uh, email from VMware. I, I subscribed and used it. So it I is released. They, they released 7.0. Okay, but the problem is you haven't got the downloads yet. For public, they haven't released the software yet. Okay? So maybe for a dedicated customers or a premium customers, they might have provided the uh, software, but we haven't got anything yet. So that, that hopefully, uh, we will get in next one or two months. No. Okay, so now <clears throat> remember you have a cluster with 64 hosts. So, how much time it took for me to configure these switches properly and port groups properly and uh, uh, kernel ports with high, high availability and all these things? So each host around 10 minutes, let's say. So, I have a 64 host, okay, and you configured it for uh, all the 64 hosts and you spend around two days and you configure it properly fine now the challenge mm -hmm. is customer has requested new vlan in physical switch he can request at any point of time right because customer has got a new business and he want to put mm -hmm. all the business into a different vlan and he don't want to mm -hmm. keep along with these existing VLANs. 
okay so he requested network team to create a new vlan in physical switch the vlan name is vlan 99 okay example so now you <coughs> as a as a vmware admin uh, as a infra admin you have to create a port group on each host for new vlan agree or disagree agree okay so there is a manual work involved in each step if, the, if you want to modify something you have to modify in every host if you have a 64 host you have to go to 65 host each and every host you have to go and manually modify the vlan configurations a port group configurations what what all things that you want to perform you have to perform on each host manually so is there any way that i can do it from centralized location Yes, there is a way. Yes, there is a way. Okay. So the way you call it as, uh, you understand this lab setup? Okay. Yeah, I got it. Properly, you, you need to remember properly configure it. So I said there is a new VLAN requirement of 99. You have to go on each host and create it. It's a manual task. So mm -hmm. how we, how we can avoid or how we can minimize this manual task by using vSphere distributed switch. Okay, vSphere distributed switch. So far, we covered standard switch, VSS, vSphere standard switch. Now, tomorrow, what we will do, we, we, we discuss about vSphere distributed switch and see how it functions. Okay, okay. Clear? Understood? Yeah. Okay. So far in last three or four sessions, what we discussed about the networking is vSphere standard networking. Standard. All right. So there is another, another concept called distributed networking or distributed switch that we will discuss tomorrow. Okay. We'll stop here because Sunil is also not here. And if we go further, then he'll miss a couple of points. So we will we'll continue tomorrow, same time. Okay, I'm, I'm really sorry for the delay today. Uh, you waited for a long time. No we'll, we'll make sure. We'll make sure tomorrow we'll complete the session on time. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me stop here. Okay. And I'll upload this video after some time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.